Sanji and that character development. Sanji and that surprising savior. Wow. Well done, Oda. Well done. When Sanji starts revealing everything to put in, takes off the mask. He says, my family doesn't really think much of me. I don't really have anyone that, a uh, friend anymore. I have no friends to rely on now because of everything that's going on. Because, you know, he's trying to push everyone away. And then on top of that, he says he can't really do anything at this time. He has to just lay down and let everything happen because whatever turn he tries to make, he's going to endanger someone. For instance, if he tries to resist, it's going to cause it to where his father will get killed. You know, he'll lose his hands. It's not even just his hands anymore. It just, it's everything. Everything he will lose if he stands up. And it's sad when Sanji sits here and talks to Pudding about this. He reveals all this. And when you really think about the big picture here, let's, like, look at what this entire scene meant, okay? Sanji poured out all his true thoughts, his feelings right now, what's going on inside of him, to Pudding. He, he told Pudding truly how he felt. For instance, Sanji, he might be trying something here. He might be not telling the whole truth. Maybe he might have a plan behind the scenes. But overall, Sanji did say his thoughts. I think close to his true thoughts of the situation, of how he feels about what is going on. And when he's sitting there telling Pudding about the marriage and all that, and Pudding's going on talking about, you know, how it's a forced marriage, and how, you know, Big Mom is all for this, and when, you know, you get to the ceremony, it's pretty much over. You cannot escape it. I mean, you had all this, you know, dialogue about marriage from Pudding. And Sanji brought the entirety of his segment of the chapter. He didn't really mention marriage. He didn't say getting married with Pudding. And he didn't see the normal acting of how Sanji would, you know, look. For instance, normally in the past, if Sanji would have saw a girl, you know how he would freak out, fangasm, I mean, that that's the normal Sanji we know and love, but the situation right now, it showcases a side of Sanji that we haven't normally seen quite often, and I appreciate this because it shows you the matter at hand, how serious it is, but also how Sanji truly feels about everything right now, and his emotions, because normally if this would have been Sanji with the Straw Hat crew, he would have freaked out if he would have saw Pudding, he would have been freaking out, he'd be like, oh, you know, she's beautiful and all that, he would be doing his crazy Sanji antics, but he didn't do that. He, he gets to sit down, talk with Pudding and all that, reveals what's happened to his face, and overall, Pudding doesn't seem to show any looks of disgust or distaste in him because of his appearance, which shows a very good side to her. Sanji, he talks to her in a very mature fashion. He just lays all, his heart on the table and just says everything, and at the end, when she starts to comfort him, he's like, you're my only savior. And in that moment, a little feeling popped up in my heart. I'm like... Am I truly witnessing right now legit romance in this series? Like, we've seen romance here and there for out One Piece, don't get me wrong. But the Sanji romance that we see, the, the build-up of this is pretty good so far. I mean, this is a very good start, because, I mean, think about it. Sanji, he wasn't being truthful completely with his friends for reasons. He was trying to protect them, which I talked about. But this is the first time he's, you know, talked to anyone right now about his overall thoughts, and he said that to Pudding, someone that he's being forced to marry. And Pudding is understanding this, that she knows that Sanji might resent this marriage because it's being forced upon him, and that he might not like it, and she, you know, he might eventually hate her. But when Sanji grabs her, hugs her, and says, you're my only savior, it's like Sanji saying thank you. At the very least, you're able to take my mind off the, the worries and problems I currently have, and not everything I'm currently experiencing that is hell... It's complete hell, because you're here, and you're very nice to me. So Sanji's entire demeanor in that scene, it shows you what he truly feels, but also how he cares about Pudding. Even if, let's just say, let's just say Pudding is lying, okay? Even if she's lying, I feel like Sanji needed that. I, I feel like he needed to lay his heart on the table and express himself to someone, because it's like any person, any real person in real life. Eventually, these emotions are going to build up. They're going to build up until they're at that, you know, boiling point, and they need to explode. The pressure needs to be blown somewhere, and that's kind of what's going on with Sanji. I mean, Sanji has been through a lot through this arc. He's had his family literally beat him, forced marriage upon him, ripped away from his friends, and as he called it his, you know, years with his friends and with Zeph, that was like heaven to him, and now he's casted into hell. And so when you think about all this, Sanji right now is having a very difficult moment in his life. He's literally going 
going through one of the most unhappiest times of his life right now, and he can't get out of it. He, he legit cannot get out of it, so he's accepting it, letting it come in at him because he wants to protect everyone else. He's sacrificing himself for the better of everyone else. Not just the Straw Hat crew, but Zeph, his father, and also others in general, and that really just hits you. You're like, damn, I feel really bad for Sanji for what he's trying to do and what he's trying to stand for right now. But I also understand the Straw Hat crew standpoint of why Luffy is doing what he's doing. I mean, Luffy wanting to give up his dream, that was beautiful. That was a very beautiful segment of last week's chapter, and also how he stands tall in this chapter, fucking badass. But one of the big things, though, about the chapter that really hits you right in the feels is when you see Sanji say, my journey ends here, my adventure needs to end. And it makes me so sad because you know Sanji, this man... He knows what type of person Luffy is, and so I feel like Sanji knows something, or he has another plan, because Sanji's shown time and time again throughout One Piece that he has plans, he thinks about things, he's not someone that will not think things through and try to figure out a way out of something, he's shown this time and time again. And judging by how he knows what type of personality Luffy has, he knows when Luffy says something, he's even said, I think... Sanji's even said along the lines when, you know, when the captain puts his mind to something, he won't stop or whatever. I think Sanji said something like that a long time ago in the past, and I highly doubt Oda kind of forgot something like that, because that's very important. Sanji knows what type of person Luffy is. When he puts his mind to something, he won't stop. He will not stop. If he puts his mind to something, he will carry it out until either A, he's dead as fuck, or B, what he sets out and accomplishes whatever he set out to do. And so when you think about this right now, Sanji knows Luffy rather well. He knows what type of personality he has. So I highly doubt Sanji just, you know, looked at what Luffy said and just walked on off thinking it was nothing. You know this is not that type of Sanji. Sanji is not a dumbass. He is by no means a dumbass. So when I feel like he was talking to Pudding in this chapter, I feel like Sanji said close to his true thoughts, but I feel like he wasn't saying everything to Pudding. I feel I feel like he was hiding something, maybe some type of goal to get out of this situation. And I mean, this is a lot of potential possibility for Sanji right now. I mean, there's a lot of possibility for character development because of this one scene right here. I mean, not even talking about the romantic development and possibly Pudding actually being Sanji's wife, which that could possibly happen. Let's just talk about the character in general, Sanji, what type of actions he needs to take to be able to get his captain out of this situation because hey, Luffy will not move. He will not move from that spot. He will legit die. He will not get out of that spot unless someone literally like manipulates him or something to move. So the big point is, is Sanji needs to do something and Sanji of all people know what type of person he is. He's been around Luffy way too long to not know what he will do. So, Luffy's situation right now, why is it bad? Why does this really make the whole situation with Sanji so much more painful? Well, as we know, this is Big Mom's territory, and as always, a Yonko is not someone you just look at and think, oh, they just got that title, and, you know, they're not that strong. No, a Yonko, as we've seen time and time again, constantly has proven to be a title worthy of a very strong person, someone that commands a large army, and someone that has a lot of authority. And Big Mom, there was points and times throughout, you know, this arc, to where many would look at Big Mom and think maybe she's not that strong. I know some were thinking that, and I myself, you know, thought about that earlier on in the chapters. I mean, I knew she was going to be strong, but, I mean, just some of the things that she displayed, it seemed like she wasn't going to be as strong as maybe someone like Whitebeard or crazy powerful like, you know, Blackbeard currently is or Shanks. So when you thought about all of this, I didn't think Big Mom was like that. But after seeing Big Mom's abilities, you realize this is no joking matter. Big Mom is not no joke. You know, this ain't no kitty game. Big Mom will kick everyone's ass because of what she is and also what type of power she wields. I mean, she's able to command the weather. She can literally put spirits inside of the weather and control it. And that, scary as fuck. Very, very scary. So, Sanji right now, he knows that Luffy, since he's wanting to stay there, and he's going to be facing Big Mom's army, Luffy right now, he's in a bad spot. Because this isn't going to be a battle that's going to be relatively winnable. I mean, the only way Luffy could win this battle, only way would be if he used Conqueror's Hockey. That's the only way I could see him overcoming 
these opponents. But even then again, these aren't opponents that are fishmen. These aren't, you know, regular Marines. This isn't people you normally can knock out with relative ease. That's not what type of opponents these are. These are strong, strong people in Big Mom's army that's on her main island. These are not going to be someone that you could just instantly one-shot and get rid of. A lot of these people are very powerful, probably have a lot of different types of devil fruits, and Luffy is completely outnumbered. And the only way he can, you know, probably overcome this is through Conqueror's Hockey. But then, though, I still don't believe it is enough. Because, I mean, if he causes too much of a havoc and uh, ruckus, it's going to cause the attention of Big Mom to finally pop up. And Big Mom is going to try to pull some shit and probably, you know, take out Luffy completely. Focus the full-on rage of her abilities onto Luffy if he does any more damage to the island. So, right now, Luffy, he, there's not much he really can do. I mean, he's going to stay there, even if he dies. He, he's willing to stand there until he dies and right now the only way he can be saved is either Jinbei popping up and doing something maybe Capone doing something I mean that that's a possibility too and we know Capone has been building something up behind the scenes to betray Big Mom and so there's a lot of potential possibility right there for Capone to play a big role in taking down Big Mom in this arc and then you have it to the stuff with Sanji whatever move he could make the Sun Pirates and stuff like that so I mean there's just a lot of potential possibilities to get Luffy out of this situation but Luffy though will not be the one to get himself out of it. It will not be Luffy, it'll be others coming to his aid and helping him. Now, overall though, Nami's probably going to be a big importance to this fight because she can control the weather, and with Luffy, you know, pretty much outmatched in terms of numbers and, you know, probably bounties and all sorts of crazy shit, Nami's going to be very important. I mean, many throw aside Nami thinking she might not be that helpful, but I mean, after what we saw with Cracker and how helpful she was, we know she could possibly help Luffy now, so that's probably what's going to happen. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. She be out.